donated by Joe as well. And um, as you go up into the wagon barn, he's helped us gather those things from not just himself, but other friends. So we are beyond thankful for what he's done for us. And so we um, have this plaque today that we're going to put onto the front of this wagon. And there's a picture of Joe on there. And we'll maybe leave it up here so that everybody can come by and see it. So I'm going to let Shirley take over. All right, thank you. Thank you so much, Holly and Park Service people and this wonderful crowd as well. I, I just want to tell you a little bit about how this wagon came into being. Um, I'm a professor of history emerita now at California State University, Sacramento. And a while back, around 2008, the National Park Service asked me to do a report for them on African Americans on the Overland Trail. Now, I, I, uh, my specialty area is African American history, but I knew this much about African Americans on the Overland Trail, and uh, that was much more than most people did. And so I started this journey. And in doing so, uh, in my work, I came across a man by the name of Hiram Young, who uh, was a slave in Missouri. He bought himself and his family out of slavery, and then he was a master carpenter wagon builder. By 1847, he had cornered the market on producing ox yokes and building wagons. And he was, and, and then he had all sorts of sorts of other enterprises feeding into the Overland uh, uh, Trail market. And this is just an, at, at, at a time when the traffic, you know, the immigration, migration was starting. And Hiram Young wagons, his, the wagons he produced <coughs> for the first the Santa Fe trade and then the Overland Trails trade became so popular that they got the nickname, people called them Hiram Young Wagons. And um, they, it was said, one of his contemporaries said that you could see wagons like this, his wagons, on the trails from Missouri to California and beyond. Um, and my husband got interested. My husband was a uh, really a renaissance man. He did so many things and he did them well. And he got interested in building Re replicating a Hiram Young wagon. And this was a uh, process that took about, from start to finish, about two years from research and everything. What you're seeing here is a, is a complete and authentic replica as can be possible. This undercarriage, the orange part, is authentic from 1855. This is the real deal. Um, and he found it I had no idea how he did it, but he found a place up in North Dakota that specialized in wagon undercarriages, and he had it shipped down. And then a whole crew of people, wonderfully talented and dedicated people, Andrew St. Mary is there, uh, is part of that crew, were assembled and they put it together at the Sac Sacramento History uh, Museum on their grounds and built it from scratch. Uh, and uh, it has toured the state. Um, people have enjoyed it. Uh, you might think about the colors. These were the co some of the colors. These were, you know, people tend to think they're, um, they were sort of black and white, right? They, they had all sorts of colors and this is one of the most popular color combinations. And um, they, it took about, from the time they got the carriage to the time that it was finished and built, about a year. But the research took about a year, too. And so um, Joe was so excited. He loved the gold mining country, the story of the gold miners. And he was especially interested in the African-American miners who, who participated in that event. And, and he would, uh, he wanted finally to donate, as Holly told you, this wagon to the parks, uh, to Coloma, as you know, it's so appropriate that it's, that's here today. So this uh, extraordinary man that I had the pleasure of being married to for 46 years, he passed away in April, 
but uh, 46 years, and we were two peas in a pod. We thought alike about history and recreating history. I, I kind of make my history with words, and he builds it in 3D here. Um, I have a book that will be published by the University of Oklahoma Press this fall. I'm putting the final touches on it, shipping it off to my publisher by Tuesday or Wednesday the latest. It's called Sweet Freedom's Plains. And it comes from, that title comes from an old uh, a abolitionist hymn, you know, uh, during slavery days. People who fled west, either as slaves or free people, came west uh, on the Overland Trails. They said, behind I left the whips and chains, before me lies Sweet Freedom's Plains. And my husband found that for me in Delilah Beasley's book. And I thought, well, what better title for my book than that? And so it's really with great pleasure and extraordinary honor. And I know he's here uh, today and just beaming that I get to talk about this and talk about him to you all, because you all look like you're, you're involved and interested in this stuff too. Um, so this is a plaque that uh, we picked up yesterday. It was nip and tuck, but we did it. Uh, that's going on the wagon, and he would he would say, "Oh, Shirley, you know, I don't need anything like that." But yes, he does, and he would he would really be appreciative of it. This picture is a wonderful picture. It says dedicated to the memory of Joe Lewis Moore, whose pioneering spirit helped us rediscover the past and reclaim it. And that's what he was about, and that's what we're about today. And I just want you all to enjoy it, the students, the children, everybody, to look at this wagon. And I was telling Andrew that it's great to see it all scuffed up. It looks like it's been on the road, you know? It looks like it's been used. So thank you all. Thank you, Coloma, everybody. I mean, there's so many people. Thank you so much.